go. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. We're back with Fusion. I got my daughter Shiley here again. Appreciate you coming out. And we're gonna do something a little different. We've been getting some requests and Madeline thought it would be a good idea to do uh, how to. So one thing you guys don't know about me is I have three daughters and my daughters, before they got their driver license, they had to know how to change their oil, change a tire, check air pressure, check their coolant, just check around the car. I never wanted them stuck on the side of the road or rely on somebody else to do work on their car if I'm not around. Know how to jump it, put a battery in it, just basic stuff. I also made them uh, learn how to drive manual. So I didn't really care about the driving test because that's easy. They needed to know how to really own a car, how to take care of a car. Uh, we bought this car back in 2018. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud to say uh, this, is, this is a six cylinder. Back then, I didn't really want Shiley to have something crazy because she has a heavy foot. So we ended up going with this car, I'm proud to say. Uh, but it is a super track pack. Mm -hmm. It's got a nice body, destroyer gray. Mm -hmm. And I want it, uh, what I'm proud about with Shiley, she just finished paying off this car. She actually paid every payment on this car, and this car is paid, and it's 100% hers. But that makes you want to take care of it, right? Yeah. You want it to last. You don't want to have problems. So we've been taking care of this car from day one. Actually, when we got it, uh, Shai and I put some springs on it because the V6 is kind of sit high. So we lowered it so it could look good. We did a couple window tinting, just small stuff. Uh, and then Shai has been driving it. Shai is in college uh, and, you know, she's busy, but we still want to maintain the car. We try to do an oil change on this car every 5,000 miles and go through it. Uh, so Shiley, what we wanted to do today is just show them how we do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, how to. So uh, right here, and by the way, I recommend to wear gloves. Gloves are cheap, you can throw them on, it just saves a lot of cleaning up. Uh, I personally like to get parts from the dealer. So I do get the filters all from Mopars. So we get all the original parts, all the air filters and everything from the OEM. Uh, as far as oil, I think they use Pennzoil. I prefer Mobile One. Uh, the car calls for 520, we use 520. And that's probably the lowest oil I will use on a car. If a car calls for zero, I usually don't do zero. I go minimum five. Uh, Mobile One is great for this car if we're changing the oil every 5,000 miles, not a problem. Uh, they tell you it protects it for 20,000 miles. We don't do that, we do it every 5,000 miles. So Shai, you wanna pop the hood and we can kinda show them around? Yeah. So again, this is the 3.6 liter VVT, uh, available vibe timing. Uh, I think it makes about, what, 300 horse, Shiley, with the eight-speed automatic. Yeah. It's pretty decent. Actually, this car drives pretty well. Uh, we're lucky enough, we have a lift. We'll do it on the lift so we can show you guys easier that we're not crawling about it. But if you're doing it at home, you can get some ramps uh, and then do it just with a regular pan and just drop the oil in there. Uh, if you are going to use a jack, make sure you use jack stands so the car doesn't collapse on you. Make sure you're safe when you're lifting the car. Uh, they do have a cover here uh, that just pops off. Okay, so you can see the motor more. It's a little dirty. Shai's been driving. You've been <laughs> off-roading without telling me? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, take that off. Uh, so real quick, you know, uh, the Mopars are pretty easy. They have a cartridge style oil filter that is right on the top. We'll take that off. The fill is right here. The dealer sometimes they put the hose down and just suck it out. I still do it old school where I lift the car and I drop the, the, the drain plug and actually drain the oil. So uh, Shadi, you want to lift the car? Hold it completely. So this is where, you know, I kind of look at the car, start taking this panel off. Again, it depends what tools you have and you can use different things. There we go. 
And Mopar makes it easy to actually put arrows for you where, which ones you need to take. Then they got some pull pins here. There we go. There we go. And I think this just pulls out like that. So this is where, you know, first thing I do, I just look around to so make sure we don't have any leaks, anything weird, everything is staying clean. That thing looks pretty dry. So again, we're lucky enough to have, you know, all the tools here uh, so we can do this pretty easily. This one opens with a half inch. Uh, again, if you're on the floor, you secure it off the frame with uh, jack stands and obviously you're crawling on your back, you're using a smaller pan and then you just, uh, you break this open. So usually before I break that open, I get a little rag just to keep it clean. I crack it open. Like that. Now, once you crack it open, make sure sometimes the oil is super hot if you just drove the car. This one should be warm because Charlie drove in this morning. And I just open it. go. Okay. Is that a drain? It's an old chain. Yeah. It's pretty dark. <laughs> Not horrible, but dark enough. Also what I do, I do look up on the car. Like I looked up, this car holds 5.9 quarts of oil. Uh, so we'll, we'll put that and then we'll start checking the oil, make sure we're dead on. We'll show you guys that in a minute. So I let it drain pretty good. This is where I take a little break, clean up stuff, get stuff prepped to put on top. Uh, we'll take the oil filter out. Another thing that I do, I make sure that the seal here on the plug is clean. And there's no debris in the motor. Everything looks really clean and nice. There's no leaks or anything. So we'll just reuse that the way it is. 20 minutes later. All right, so now we got all the oil drained. Uh, one little trick that I didn't show you guys is that if you open the cap on the top, usually it helps it come out a little quicker. Uh, so now, Shadi, maybe you could do this. Uh, go ahead and put the plug back in, threads that in. So I just push this out of the way while it's still not dripping on the floor and I can reach. Perfect. Wipe around there with the towel, make sure that's all clean. And we can push this out of the way. Take our half inch wrench, make sure that's tight. Shall you make sure that's tight? Here you go, that's it. That's tight enough, let me see. We're good on the bottom of the car, so Shadi, you wanna give me the panels? We'll put everything back on. Yeah. Line me up. Slides underneath. Oh. Yeah, let's start with the back one. Go ahead and get started. Get them started. Yeah, that's it. And get that one started so we don't cross thread them. So I kind of get them all started so you can easier to line up. And then I tighten them down. So I can still move it around a little bit and get them all lined up. Do the two front ones. See, so it gives you a little flexibility yeah. to move it. Also, we know this car is pretty clean. If you're working on an older car, you're working just on, on the floor, not a bad idea to have some safety glasses. Uh, that's always a good idea. And just shut them down. Shot, you want to get the front ones? Yeah. Just it's a little. Okay. Oh, good. Okay, yeah, all right. So we're down on the bottom. We lower the car. We'll go back on the top. We're gonna do the oil filter. Oil filter on this car is from the top. Some of them are cartridge style, so you just twist them off. But this one uh, is a cartridge style, but it's on the top. So you just break it open. So, here it is. 
this, get a towel right underneath it. Okay, so you can see here's the used filter. So when you're using the, the filter is where it gets a little more, where you gotta be a little more careful, you know? First, I like to wipe them down, make sure it's clean. So I do like to use the original OEM. Like Shiley said, this is a Mopar one. Should come with an O-ring in the box, Shy. You can use a pick or whatever you have that you can use it to grab the O-ring. Whoa. <laughs> Sling it at your kids. So that's the O-ring. It's a good idea to replace the O-ring every time. Uh, to put the new O-ring, usually you could just kind of stretch it over. get it down into that groove that where it was okay usually I like to get a little bit of oil on it so it's not dry it doesn't crack or get snatched up when you're tightening it up okay so that's number one number two this will come and you got to make sure it's slide in all the way okay so you can see that it right there and then you can put that back on uh, and that's pretty much it on this one. It's pretty simple. Just make sure the O-ring is in there. Make sure you use the good quality filter because if they're shorter or they don't have the right fitment, you may starve for oil. Uh, so we don't want to use that and then dispose the other one. And hand tighten it. And just give it a little, snag it up. Perfect. Again, you don't have to kill it. That's done. Now we're going to the fun part where we're going to add the oil. So like we said, I looked it up. This car holds 5.9 uh, quarts of oil. Oh. Sure nothing falls inside. And usually it'll always tell you what kind of oil to use right on the cap. So they're calling for the 5W20. That's factory. We went with mobile one. So we're using the factory one. What I do need to find though is a funnel. You saw a funnel? We what? usually have them laying around here somewhere. A few moments later. Gonna have to do the trick. You can open the big one, Shy. How many quarts will I need? What do we say? 5.9? Five. Five. So that's five quarts, and then we'll use the last one. Okay. All right, all right, all right. So that's where we go with the funnel. Big boy over here. Yeah, right? All right, here we go. Let's see what we got. Should I hold this? I gotta open it. There she goes. All right, you can keep adding, Shai. So we know again, it's 5.9 quarts. This is a five quart, uh, let's go slow. Five quarts, so we know we could put the whole bottle of this one and then we'll measure the second one. Perfect. All right, and then we could put about half of the other quarts. Mm -hmm. Then we'll... For people who haven't done it before, they have measurements also on the side here. Exactly. And Perfect. you can see the level of the oil in it. Yeah, so then we'll do, we'll do that. And then uh, we'll check the dipstick. And now to check the dipstick and check your level, you have to run the car for a little bit to get the oil through the filter and run it. And then you could check the level. So we know we're gonna be safe at five and a half quarts. We'll fire up the car, and then we'll start checking all our levels. Yeah, so we're, we're safe to start it, and then we can make some adjustments. Uh, 
Ahora de mí. I'm just going to close it. I know I'm probably going to have to add a little bit, but just keep it closed. Wipe down a little bit some of the excess oil from the filter. Make a little bit of a mess, you know. I'm just going to take a look at the dipstick. Let's see. The dipstick on this car is on the passenger side. It's the yellow handle on the top. So we're actually already reading right at full but we haven't cycled the oil through the filter. That's gonna take a little bit, so we're probably gonna just top it off when we're done. So I think right now, Shadi, you can start the car. Okay. And then right away I look around the filter, I'm looking for any leaks underneath. Sometimes you can leave it open and just look for any kind of leaks or anything that is going on. That's pretty good. I let it run for like 30 seconds, just get the oil everywhere. There's the idle coming down. All right, Shai, it's good. First pull, you just wipe it completely down because it's not accurate. Just make sure everything's clean. Wait a little second for it to drop. So you can see when it's clean, you can see you have two holes. The lower hole is your minimum oil level. The higher hole is your max. You don't want to overfill it either, and you don't want to run below that. The distance between the lower hole to the top hole is one quart. So you know if you're on the bottom hole right below it, you can add one quart, you'll be completely full. If you're halfway, that's half a quart, okay? So let's take a look where we're at. Okay. So where are we, Shy? Below. Yeah, we're right at the bottom, right? Mm -hmm. So we can put the rest of that cord in. Yeah. Safely. So here we go. I'll leave that in there for right now. Let's add that last quart real quick. We should be in good shape. Let me grab the funnel. All right, so you can put the rest of that cord in. It should get us exactly where we want to be. Did a pretty good oil change. Mm -hmm. So it's probably 5.9 uh, without the filter. So yeah. the filter took some. So, because already the filter has oil in it and it's, it's already all done, we could just go and check the, the, the dipstick and that should have come up for us. And we should be right in the zone where we want to be at this point. So again, I always wipe it down one time, reinsert it all the way down, and then get another reading. Where are we at, Chai? Right above the first dot. We're about halfway there, right? Uh, yeah. It's probably going to come down a little more. We'll check in a little bit. If we need a little bit more, we'll add a little more. In the meantime, while we're waiting for that, what about... Uh, Showing the dash, how to reset it? We could do that in the end. Why don't we do air filter? Oh, yeah. You want to do that? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do that. What we got for the air filter? What do we got in here? What size is that? Eight. So eight millimeter. Can you use also a, a screwdriver? But if you have, if you have an eight millimeter, it makes it easier. Go. What do we got here? Looks like that's it. Oh, okay. Just lifted. Looks like it just lifts, and then you can pull it out. Here's the filter. And again, we we stay pretty good on our cars. So every 5,000 miles, we just do filters. We do everything. Here's a brand new one shot. You want to open it. So yeah. it's got a little bit of dirt. Not bad. I've seen really bad filters. An air filter is important. It'll, it'll help you uh, get better fuel economy. 
keep the engine running cleaner. You don't want dirt going through your engine. Uh, makes it way better. It, the motor needs to breed, and this definitely helps it. You'll get more power, better mileage. Uh, it's really a good way to do it. So drop it in this way with the element down. That's the dirty side. This is the clean side. Now we're in business. Okay, air filter is in. It's tight. I'm gonna tighten this a little bit. It's a little loose. We didn't loosen it, but I didn't get it good last time. I gotta make sure that's on good. I don't know why that's loose. Another thing we should do is, what's that? Cabin filter. Cabin filter. Yeah, so we're using a Mopar one. Uh, I try to keep that clean, so we are in LA. The air is not the best out here, so we do want to try to keep the filter good. For your cabin filter, it's sitting in the passenger side under this panel. And you just kind of squeeze it. And this removes. You can lay it right up here. And then on the inside, um, it's got a little clip that opens up like that. And you can slide the cabin filter out. And you guys can see, here's a new one. Here's the old one. Again, not horrible. You know, we change them every 5,000 miles. Some people I've seen never change them, but I like to change them for my kids. Uh, keep it clean, what they're breathing through their air conditioning system and through their cabin. So once you do that, you click that in, put the cover back in, and it's so easy. They're not expensive. and. I can't tell you how many cars we get in the shop and they never replace this. And it looks horrible and people are, are breeding that. Okay, so it's sealed, looks good. So now, what do we have to do next? Do you remember? Check the oil again? Exactly, all right, give me a rag, let's do that. We're we using a lot of rags in this business. <laughs> all right. Yeah, use the rag you don't care about. Yeah, let's check that again. Again, wipe it off. We'll let the car is sitting on, obviously when you check your oil, make sure the car is sitting on a level surface. So you're not uphill or downhill because you won't get an accurate reading. And how do we look? I don't know, I'd say it's pretty, pretty dead good. on. Yeah. Now that's really good. You see it's sitting right below the top line yeah. right there, like right there. That's perfect. Not overfilled, not underfilled. Perfect. We're in business. Looks nice and clean. So what's next, Shai? Um my <laughs> reset the oil yeah so we'll show oil. that we'll pull the car out. I think before we do that one thing I like to do just just we'll have to put the cover on before we put the cover it's kind of dusty I'm gonna get an air gun I'm gonna blow out some stuff out of here uh, it's not really for the video just to keep it a little cleaner it let, helps me find leaks in the future and just keeps it overall clean usually I do it before I start working on it uh, but before you blow anything in the engine make sure everything is sealed so you're not getting anything in the engine So put the cover back on, they're pretty simple, it's got little studs and then you just line up the studs uh, about right there. That's it. Alright, so did the oil change, the only thing left to do is reset your light. Yeah. So here's a couple things I do, I reset the service light. But the service lights on this car comes on every 10,000 miles for an oil change. Me personally, I like to know when I did the oil change. So I go to the B trip. So you have the A trip and the B trip. I always reset my B trip so I know how many exact miles I have on my oil and all my filters and everything that I did, okay? So should I go ahead and uh, uh, we'll probably lift, take the car off the lift. You can back it up and then we can show them how to uh, reset the light. Okay? okay? All right, cool. So, once 
once you're inside the car, you can press these buttons here on the steering wheel and it takes you through all this stuff. And then I go to vehicle info. It gives you a lot of stuff if you go through here, but we're gonna go to the oil life. So here's oil life and here it says, hold okay to reset. I'm gonna reset that. The trip info. So here you can go to trip info and you can see my trip B was about 5,000 miles and I'm gonna also reset this one. So I know uh, when we changed all the filters and had the last oil change. All right guys, so we just did an oil change on this 2018 Charger. This is a Shiley's car. And guys, look, I know this is very basic. We're trying something very simple for people to look at a quick video and see how to do things on certain cars. Uh, just I think it's a good idea for uh, kids out there where they're driving cars just to know the basics, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we learn them. We try to push that to the next generation. And again, this is not, if you guys are looking for crazy burnouts, crazy rides, you got to skip this video, okay? You know, uh, we got to, you know, we got to go to our serious videos where we're doing a little sideways and talking about like big builds, 2,500 horsepower builds and things like that. Mm -hmm. This is really basic stuff. We got some requests for it and we're trying to do that. Shadi, yeah. how you feel? I, I feel good. I mean, it's really important. They don't teach us these skills in school. It's uh, really important to have a basic maintenance skill for your cars. You want to make them last long. You want to take care of them. And... Um, yeah, thank you for yeah. helping us today. Right. And I know there's a lot of people out there that, you know, I hear all the time you're being ripped off at the auto shop and this and that. And so you can always come to YouTube and figure it out. I love making these little videos just for the people that want to do it themselves. Yeah, you don't always have to take it to the dealer. Mm -hmm. You can get the parts. You can try it yourself. You can watch videos like this. And it's a great point. You know, I was lucky enough when I was in high school, I took an auto shop like they gave us a carburetor to rebuild and they gave us to work on cars and they taught us just the fundamentals and those don't exist. Thank God for YouTube and other channels that can show that, but this is what we're trying to do. Just bring some of that back. Yeah. So put it in the comments. What else you want to see? Basic maintenance skills for this father daughter series and hopefully we can help you out. All right, Thanks guys. for watching. Thank you.